Hi and welcome to Tabletop Mini Showcase. I'm Jim and in this video I'm going to show you how I made this Pickle Josh brush holder as a gift for Josh from the Pickle Jar which I gave to him at this year's Pickle Fest. Let's get to it. To start this build I began with a 3D print of a Pickle Rick from the Rick and Morty TV show. I'm Pickle Rick! If you have access to a 3D printer this is a pretty good way to get the ball rolling. I began by drilling four holes into the 3D print so that I could insert armature wire in order to give the model some stability and strength. The wire that I used was simply made from a metal coat hanger. I cut this into various little metal rods which I could bend and shape into the shape required and then inserted them into the 3D print and super glued them in place. Super glue alone will not hold fantastically in this situation but as green stuff is being applied on top it will create quite a strong bond and it will help to connect these two areas in a way that is less likely to break than if I was to just sculpt them with green stuff or just attach an armature wire without any kind of covering over it. For the base I took some cereal box cardboard and I drew around the lid of a rattle can in order to get a nice big circle and with two layers of that cardboard to create a good level of thickness and strength I then glued a a whole bunch of terrarium bark chips to the top to give it a nice rocky surface. I then glued a bunch of sand onto the top of this to create a little bit more texture and to help blend these bark chips together so that they don't just look like a bunch of random rocks placed on top of each other as in the real world dirt gets everywhere and most rocky formations that you find will have a good amount of dirt in between the rocks. In order to sculpt the various parts of this model, the arms, the legs, the hair, the lip ring etc. I used green stuff and one of the ways that I like to sculpt with green stuff is rather than trying to do everything all at once I will start by roughing out the basic shapes and allowing that area to dry so that I don't later risk knocking those areas and causing problems that will take a long time to fix. This way I can get the rough shapes in place and then add all of the finer details on top afterwards. For the hair I simply put green stuff on in the rough shape that the hair would and then used a scalpel or hobby knife and scraped into it various different lines in order to look like hair. It's not that complicated, it doesn't need to be over complicated, it really is that simple. Just a few scrapes with a knife into the green stuff, it will look like hair. Obviously it helps if you try to sculpt it in the kind of style the person has their hair. For instance Josh has a bit more of a fringe than your average long haired person. He doesn't just have one long bob type cut. So for my model I tried to include a little bit of shorter hair towards the front. If you are sculpting hair there are certain things that it's useful to know in particular if you're doing shorter hair as the lining of a person's hair is kind of specific so I will put a picture up which shows the shape of a short haircut so that if you do ever want to sculpt hair onto any of your models or even paint hair onto your models in areas where it's kind of not really sculpted this little guide will help you to do this. I genuinely worked as a barber for the first like 10 years or so after I left school and I know a thing or two about how hair is cut and how it is lined around our heads. You have to line around people's hair when you're a barber, it's just part of the job. So I definitely know shapes and the growth patterns of hair. So you can take my word for it that this is a pattern of hair growth that you will see very commonly. For well, things such as the hands, I began by creating a kind of like pancake shape on the ends of the arms, just a very simple flat round surface which I then allowed to dry so that I could build the fingers and the details of the hand on top of it. The reason why I do this rather than just immediately trying to sculpt the entire hand is by having this basis that you start with you almost like save that area of the model so you can then work in smaller details on top and have it not affect any of the actual structure or initial shape. The sculpting on top of this can be done pretty easily then. You can just sort of roll out little tubes of green stuff in order to create fingers. You can just plop a bunch of green stuff on top and actually press it into the shape with a sculpting tool and know that you're not going to be actually deforming the entire shape of the hand because you have this one area that is already set. It's quite a good idea to look at real world references so that you can ensure that what you're doing is actually realistic. So you know, take a little bit of time, just google whatever it is that you're trying to sculpt. If it's a hand, have a look at hands in that particular position 
and get a few pictures up on your monitor so that you can have a look and copy what it is that you're seeing there. Having a two-dimensional flat static image that you can work from, it, it just gets rid of a lot of the variables that you don't really need to be worrying about. For the hand that is holding the brush, I first just created the circle around where the brush will be and tried not to worry about creating the shapes of the fingers. I just wanted to make sure that I had an area that the brush could slot through where it would be held securely and safely in the position that I wanted. So I took a brush and I placed it roughly where I wanted it to be and I wrapped green stuff around then carefully pulled the brush out. It's just a way for you to ensure that the important part of the school, i.e. in this situation the hole that is going to hold the brush as it's a brush holder is correct. So by getting that bit done first and out of the way then able to go on add all the smaller details on top. For his feet I wanted to create a nice little pair of sort of cartoonish converse trainer. Just like with the hands I started by just roughing out the basic shape and then once I would got that basic shape sorted I then added a very thin layer over the top which I could sculpt the laces into and toe cap sole of the shoes. I then also used two very very small little circles of green stuff to create the circles on the outside of the shoes where the stars are. I literally just rolled a little ball in my hand, placed it onto the side and squished it flat. You roll the ball, flatten it out, it's going to turn into a circle. Once I had the sculpting part of the model complete, I undercoated it with a rattle can grey primer. The reason why I used a rattle can grey primer rather than using my airbrush is because I started out with a 3D print, there was a significant amount of texture and layer lines from that 3D print which I wanted to try to disguise and since rattle cans tend to leave a little bit of a rough surface texture, I figured this would be a good way to kind of bridge that gap between the green stuff and the 3D print. As this is also a very big model in comparison to say a 40k Space Marine, I knew that I wouldn't be clogging up any of the details by going a little bit ham with a rattle can. <laughs> With the grey primer applied, I then went on to begin putting the base coat colours onto the model. I didn't put a lot of effort into being super neat at this point, as I knew that in the next step I would be applying a whole bunch of Agrax Earthshade in order to provide the model with some shading. I pretty quickly threw these colours on and just tried to get a decent approximation of the colours that I want in each area and after that had dried I threw that Agrax Earthshade on. I really quite liberally with a big brush just spread it on all over and allowed that to dry. The reason why I like using Agrax Earthshade as opposed to say Null Noil for things such as shading is first of all it's more of a brown tone which I just prefer for shading. I think black just looks a bit stark and cold. Black. Johnny. Yes, I shall I shall need to get the black out. Johnny. Yes. yes. Black. 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 Like the clouds of death that follow me into the forest of doom and hide in the wardrobe of darkness. Black. you have more brown tones in your shadows it kind of warms up the model a little. Obviously if you're painting minis I don't recommend that you just you know dip them with <laughs> an all over shading ordinarily. There'll be instances where that might work but usually you're going to want to shade using other colours and actual shades of the colour that you're using on that particular area so maybe with like a darker ink or you'll start with a darker colour and then work your way up but if you are just going to throw a wash on there and use that for shading more often than not I'd rather use Agrax Earthshade than Null Oil except for maybe with metallics. The reason for that also is Agrax Earthshade dries a lot more matte in its finish whereas Null Oil has quite a glossy finish so unless you're wanting to really put a lot of time into trying to matte varnish your model and remove all of that shininess it's just easier to use Agrax Earthshade and get a nice matte finish right from the start. It looks better in my opinion. I'm not a big fan of overly glossy looks on models or models where in one area it's really matte and in another area it's really glossy. I understand why people do that sometimes with like gems and things like that but at the same time I think why bother going to all the trouble of painting highlights and shadows onto that area to then just go and gloss varnish it 
and have a whole bunch of other highlights and shadows then be created which are different to the ones that you've painted it doesn't make sense to me if anything you just end up with two sets of highlights that don't really join like they don't really make sense like you might have a totally different light source providing a spot of highlight that is totally different from the highlight that you've painted so it's just gonna look bad i don't see the point in doing it some people do some people like to do that if you're a model like do what you want me at the end of the day i'm not going to tell people how they can and can't paint models but i'll just give you my opinion that i don't think that it looks good anyway with the icraxa shade layer applied i then rebase coated all of the areas to give the model a nice clean look obviously leaving the agraxa shades dark shading parts in all the recesses in order to provide definition for the actual green of the pickle area i kind of sponged and stippled green onto there and worked my way up from the initial base coat color right through to my lightest shades of green as i was doing this i used various techniques as i say sponging and stippling but i also as i got lighter started to paint actual blob circles of the lighter colors in order to create a interesting texture and a little bit more of an interesting look which is pretty similar to how a pickle would look if you were to look at a real life one they have lots of interesting little speckly type spots on them especially if they're going a little bit iffy personally i think it just adds a little more interest and it just looks a little bit more deliberate which alleviates that look of somebody just rushing with a sponge or whatever if you can create what looks like a texture that is intentional people will judge that as more of a artistic decision than just a form of laziness or chaos for the base i just did what i normally do for these sorts of martian style bases i went with scrag brown agrax earth shade as a shade for this and then lots of orangey red pigment powder which gives the surface a really dusty dark orange kind of look uh, because it's scrap brown and agrax air shade you get a lot of dark tones in the recesses but the pigment powder kind of picks up around the top surfaces and also settles into the recesses but leaves enough visible that you do have that differentiation between light and dark which is more interesting to look at than just a flat color plus you have a very significant texture difference between the model itself and the ground the ground looking really dusty and the model obviously not looking dusty this is something that I really like to see. I quite often see sort of golden demon level models where people painstakingly try to paint everything really smooth including the ground and all of the environment and to me it kind of distracts from the model when you have everything just looking so generically smooth like the ground wouldn't look as smooth and tidy as that in real life if you were to view that model with more texture and dustiness to its surroundings you would have a more interesting separation so i personally enjoy having that really different look where you've got a dusty ground level and then you've got the cleanness of the model and that is pretty much that and the model really wasn't overly difficult to paint or to sculpt i did kind of have to do it quickly because i was up against the clock i left it a little bit late in order to get it done in time for the pickle fest i was working on something else for another video i thought it would be done sooner and i ended up having a really short period of time to get this entire thing built and painted and since i'm allergic to green stuff i have to be very careful about how much of it i use at once so that i don't have a really severe allergic reaction and so i couldn't quite put in as much time into the sculpting phase as i would have liked but still i think it came out pretty nice josh seemed to really like it when i gave it to him that's what she said <laughs> and ultimately that is what the important part was i wanted to do something nice and have him have something that whenever he looks at it he thinks that was made by a fan the fan actually took the time to sculpt and paint something for me uh, i think that's nice and it's something that hopefully when he sees it kind of brings him a little bit of joy and makes him feel good about himself because he should you're a good man josh we had a fun time all of us at pickle fest and that's thanks to you making it a great time so cheers bro i really hope you guys have enjoyed this video for my next video i will be returning back to painting actual miniatures for wargaming this is kind of a miniature to some extent but it's not your standard tabletop miniature my next video i will be getting back to that in fact for my next video 
I'm going to be showing you guys the marine that I've painted for the 90s Space Marine Challenge set by Darren Latham. I can't upload that video yet because Darren wants the reveal for all of the models to be September the 2nd and I don't want to upload anything early and sort of ruin that surprise for everyone. So yeah, as of my next video we will be getting back to standard wargaming model type stuff. I just wanted to share this with you guys because it was a fun little thing that I built and I don't know, maybe there'll be a few little tips or ideas that are in this video that might help you with maybe terrain or just generally sculpting things. If you guys have enjoyed this video and you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so 100% for free by hitting the like, share and subscribe buttons. And if you don't wanna miss out on any of my new videos, hit the little notification bell. That way you'll get a notification whenever I upload anything new. Also, if you'd like to ask any questions or maybe even just say hi, put it in the comment section down below. I love reading all of your comments, I genuinely do read every single comment and I always try my best to respond to every single comment. So don't think that I'm just going to ignore you, I will not, I will always do my best to get back to everyone. I love having a little bit of a community and everyone that's been commenting and reaching out to me so far has been super, well not everyone, <laughs> most people have been super lovely, there's been a couple that I've had to block. but you know it's a minority and I will always make sure that when there are rude people or people that are being abusive I block them not just for my own sake but so that everyone else out there who is commenting and being nice and polite doesn't have to worry about some idiot being abusive and if I catch anyone in the comments not just being abusive to me but being abusive to anyone they will get blocked the people that are part of this community are important to me and I want it to be a place where people can relax, talk and have fun and I'm not going to allow people to spoil that. So with that said, until next time, in a bizzle. Action!